Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to make a 2D clicker style game in Unity and welcome to episode 1. So this series will help you build a clicker style game. So if you've ever played anything like Cookie Clicker or Clicking Bad or anything similar to that sort of game, this entire series will help you build one from start to finish, even if you are an absolute beginner. So if there's anything you want to see extra in this, just you know, feel free to leave a comment below. So as I said, this is aimed at absolute beginners. So up until this point, um, you've got this open. If you haven't even got to this point, you may have got to this point where we have the Unity Download Assistant. You just have to make sure when you're installing it that you have the Unity Engine ticked. Uh, not too bothered about documentation, but standard assets should be ticked. If you want to use Visual Studio for programming, have it ticked. If you untick it, you use Mono Develop. I'll be using Mono Develop in this series, but if you're going to use Visual Studio, it's all the same. The scripting is going to be the exact same. And then down here, you've got the devices you want to install for. So if you want to aim for a mobile device, Android, iOS, make sure you have these ticked. Same with Mac and Linux. By default, you should have Windows um, built in anyway, so you don't need to worry about that. So once you've got Unity up and running, you should have something looks like this. So you would type in your project name. So 2D Clicker, find your location. And it doesn't really matter too much at this point whether we use 3D or 2D. I'm going to use 2D for this series, but the principle is going to be the exact same for 3D because all that's different is just the visualization in our scene view. So once we've done that, we don't need to worry about any asset packages. We can just click on Create Project. Once you've got to that point, you'll have something that looks very, very similar to this. Now, for an absolute beginner, this is going to be a bit daunting. For someone who's a little bit used to Unity, they'll understand what's going on here. And for those of you who've been using Unity for a while, we don't need to worry about this. But for those absolute beginners out there, let's have a quick run through of what this entire layout is. Over here, we have something called the hierarchy. Now the hierarchy is where we store each game object in text format. For example, here we have the main camera selected. And every game object you can see in here, whether it is active or non-active, but we'll discuss that in just a moment. So the hierarchy is where we can see by text every object that is in our scene, which is this big window here. The scene view is where we can drag and drop items, click on items and modify. So we could click on our camera here. You can see it activates. And one thing to note is we can't see something specifically that we see in game development engines, and that's an X, Y, and Z coordination. Over here at the very top above the hierarchy, we have a couple of little tools that we can use. If we click on this cross one here, we'll be able to see we have the X coordinate, the Y, and the Z, but we won't really be using the Z too much because we're doing all this in the second dimension. So you can move these things across and along, up and down, and to undo anything, it's the usual in Windows, hold control, press Z, and it will put it back to where it originally started. So next to here, we have the game view. At the moment, it's just blue by default. The game view is where we can actually play along with anything we've built in our scene view. So once we've got some elements in there, we've got some coding in there, this is where we could play along just to test out everything is working just fine. So we can switch back to scene view by clicking this tab up here. So a couple of little things to add into the scene view. We can scroll by using the middle mouse wheel in and out. We can also use the arrow keys to move up, down and all around. And if we press F, we can focus and set everything nicely. But that's also the same if we zoom in, hold down the middle mouse wheel and move over here. If we double click on something in the hierarchy, we can focus it. So over here we have something called the inspector panel. Now the inspector panel is where we can see all components and elements of specific game objects. In this case, with the main camera, we have the transform component and the camera component, as well as a couple of others. So this is where we can modify and change various things within Unity. So if we want to change the rotation on the camera, if we want to change the position or the scale, scale doesn't really matter too much with the camera, but let's change the position on the X. Now we can either type in a number Let's put 10. Or we could actually hover our mouse over the X, hold down the left mouse button and move it around like so. 
So let's set that back to zero. But that also applies to every single aspect of the transform component. The camera has a couple of things that we can change, but we won't change them right now. It's just worth noting that any um, aspect of changing an object can be done in the inspector panel. So down at the bottom here, we have the asset window. This is where we store all our scripts, all our textures, materials, objects, pretty much anything we import into the game engine. It's all stored down here, and then we can keep it neat and tidy in the asset folders. Next to it, we have the console. So the console is mainly used for if we have any problems during writing scripts. We've written a script, it's got an error in it, we're not quite sure what's going on. It'll display a little bit of help in here and you can always double click on that error and it will take you to where it thinks the error lies within your script. There's also various other uses for it. For example, um, your text for debug, if uh, you've written something in a script you want to see, you've clicked a button and it displays down here but we'll get to that later on. And finally, we have animation. We probably won't be using animation too much in this series, but it's always wise to have it there. If you don't have that animation tab, this is where you can start customizing your Unity layout. So over here, you have a little option button. If we click it, you can add tab and you can add in the animation component. On the flip side to that, you can also move tabs around. So. If you want to take a tab, let's say animation, and move it here, you can always hold your left mouse button down and drag and place it up here. So that's how you can customize your layout. And that's the same with pretty much anything within Unity. You could drag your game tab down here and have your game down here. So I'm going to move everything back to how it is by default. There we go. So we can just move everything around nice and quickly using that way. You could also move your hierarchy over here, move your inspector panel over here. So it's always worth customizing Unity to the way you would want to see it. So if you think that the uh, default layout isn't quite to your style, feel free to change it around and get it to how you want it. Because at the end of the day, it's you that's developing. So next thing we'll look at is the build settings and what platform we want to develop for. <clears throat> so if we go to file and build settings, here we can change whatever platform we want to build for as long as we have the module installed. So if we have PC Max Linux by default, you can see it's indicated by this little Unity logo here. If we want to build for iOS, we click it and then click on switch platform. Same applies for Android and pretty much anything else. Uh, for Xbox One, you would probably need to open the download page to install the module. Uh, for things like Vita, you will need a license, but so that's not exactly free, but this whole series is going to be able to show you how to build it all for free. So that's maybe something to look into later on. So anything you build in Unity can be built <clears throat> and ported to any supported platform, anything at all. So if you've originally built it for PC, Mac, Linux, you can easily take it to Android with a click of a button. So click there and click on switch platform. So let's close that down. And Unity is very object oriented, but that's not to say there isn't just as much coding. All coding we do in this series will be done in C sharp. There will be no Java programming in this at all. It's all going to be C sharp. But we'll start with the early stuff and don't worry if it, you find it too difficult because we'll explain things as we go along. And there's always the ability to download any scripts that we write on the website. So what we'll do is we will explore a couple of objects. So I'm going to zoom in a touch here onto the scene. And if we go to game object, and go to UI and let's start with text. Well, you'll see a canvas appears and an event system. Now the event system you don't really need to worry about too much. You can more than likely leave that alone for the entirety of development. The canvas itself is what represents the screen. So if we double click on the canvas we can see it's represented by a white box and if we double click on the text you'll see it's put the text here. So Everything we do here is going to be all in 2D. We don't really need to worry about any 3D elements, at least not in early stages of development. So we can move this by using the X, or if you want to, you can select this fifth option here, and it will select the area around it, leaving blue dots on the outside. It means you can hold 
the left mouse button and move it around like so. You'll notice at this point, the position on the X and Y is changing in the inspector panel over here. So we could manually change this. So let's give it a go. Let's put this to zero and zero. Let's double click on our text again and let's zoom out. You'll see it's dead center. Now, if we wanted it somewhere else, we could use this anchoring little thing here. If we select it, you'll see we've got a couple of different options of where we can anchor this particular UI element to. We could have it at the top, we could have it at the bottom, right and left. So the idea of an anchoring position means that wherever or however large the screen is going to be, it's always going to be anchored to this position. It's quite useful when we're doing mobile development because everybody's screen is slightly different size and different shape. So it's always wise to keep note of your anchoring points. So I'm going to anchor it to the top center there. And what we do now is if we zero out the position on the Y, you'll see that zero, zero, zero now brings it to the top. So taking a look at this actual UI element, we could change the font, font style, size, alignment, color, a couple of different things. So let's have a look at this. Let's change the size to something a little larger. Let's try 26. And let's just have the text as Jimmy's 2D clicker. And now if we have this fifth tool selected, we can actually change the size of this UI element just by holding your left mouse button down on one of the blue orbs and dragging like so. And another great way of using this tool to check everything is center is if we hold the left mouse button down to move, you can see that as we get to the center, it snaps a little bit and we see a blue line down the middle. This means that this object is now dead center of our screen. So let's change the size. Uh, in fact, the alignment, I mean. We've already changed the size. So the alignment is now center. So we can see everything is perfectly center. And let's change the color. Let's change it to white. But it also gives you the opportunity to change the alpha. Now the alpha is how transparent, translucent, or opaque an object is. So if it's set as 255, the object is completely opaque. If it's set as zero, the object is completely transparent and anything in between is just its translucency. So let's keep it as 255. I'm gonna change the font style to bold to make it a bit thicker. And let's press play and have a look how that looks. So you can see the text element we've created is perfectly fine in the middle there. And no matter what size screen, it'll always be represented by 46 down from the center of the top of the screen. So it will always appear perfectly there. Now there's a lot of different things in Unity that we aren't going to deal with in this series. Things like shadows, things like lighting, all that kind of thing, because there's no need to in this style of a 2D game. But that doesn't mean that we can't actually do it in certain ways. So there's going to be different ways we can explore and experiment. For example, we have a blue background here, but we can always change that with skyboxes, and we will do that at a later date. So now let's change the name of this text. So if we click on it, we can either right click and click on rename, or if you're using Windows, simply F2. Let's call this title text. So what I like most about Unity is its simplicity. And I think for creating a clicker style game, Unity is going to be the best option to do it in. So let's save this scene now because we don't want to get all the way building something and then our scene isn't saved. And we can either hold control and press S or go to file and save scene. Then you'll be prompted with this. We just need to type in the name of this scene. So let's call this uh, main scene and click save. At this point, you'll notice down here in the asset window, we have a new object. So as I said, everything in Unity, which is classed as an object, can be found down here in the assets. So the main scene is now main scene.unity, which is a real file in the Windows system. So it's stored here in the asset window. And if we need to change scenes at any point, we can always go to a different scene and then we can double click this scene and it will automatically load up everything here. 
So that's the introductory episode to this series and there's going to be a lot to learn and a lot to do. But as I say, don't worry, it is for absolute beginners and if you ever get stuck, there's plenty of options to ask questions in the comments. So next episode, we're going to look at adding some more UI elements as well as setting up the interface that we can use to play our game. There will more than likely be scripting in the next episode, but as I said, everything we do, you'll be guided perfectly through without any problems because it's not too difficult to code. It may seem daunting, but it isn't. So guys, if you have any questions or want to know anything at all about this series, please leave them in the comments below and I will see you in the next episode. Thank you very much for watching.